All right guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another special Saturday episode where we get a little bit more in depth with some DIY mods and techniques. Now, our major episodes on a Tuesday are more entertainment based, really punch out the build and try and get some good content out. But there's still a lot of guys out there who have been around from the start with the OG Build Not Bought where it was a little bit more in depth. Um, and one of those episodes is today. Now, one of the best viewing episodes from back in the GU patrol build was actually the wiring episode, which makes me kind of think that it's still quite daunting for a lot of people when it comes to wiring, whether they're doing um, accessories or in this case, we're actually wiring up a whole car from scratch. So I thought this isn't going on the main episode because it's quite boring to watch wiring. It's not much to film, it's more information based. So I thought I'd throw together a quick Saturday episode. So I appreciate you uh, liking and subscribing to the channel to uh, show the support for these Saturday episodes and let us know down below um, what you want to see more detail about. We've done a few now, engine building, gearbox rebuild, welding, and now we're doing 12 volt wiring. So let's rip into this. Okay, now the XC build behind me, this is that monster truck thing we are creating. Um, it's real fab heavy. That's the reason I built this thing is to try and get more about actual built, not bought. Like we handmade this chassis and we're really kind of winging it as we go. Now, part of that is obviously wiring has to be done from scratch also. So there wasn't a single cable in this car at all. So we're actually starting from scratch. So you guys can see what's involved with wiring up a whole car completely. Now we're probably not gonna get too in depth with wiring up the motor because there isn't one. But when we get to the holly stuff with the ECU injection distributor, all that, I'll be covering that in probably one of the main episodes. But today is more about the basics of the car. So what's on a car? Lights, accessories, the stuff for your engine, the starter motor, the battery, alternator, all that kind of stuff. So first thing I did was actually write a list, a little bit of a really basic diagram. That's all we need. Super basic diagram of a car with wheels and what we're essentially gonna have on this thing. So we've got rock lights here. I'm gonna have a front camera, obviously headlights, indicators, tail lights, brake lights. We're gonna have a couple of speakers in here, camera, some more LEDs, just some a basic map of what you want the car to have. There's a couple of switch panels to control all that. So you've got your inputs and your outputs. Your inputs are your user inputs, what you do in the cab, when you're sitting at the steering wheel, what switches you have, what things you can turn, wipers, indicators, all that. And then your outputs are what they are controlling. They are lights, they're the physical things on the car that are gonna be turning on and off. Now, in between that, you've got all your wiring. Some things that pull a lot of current will need a relay. Other things, not so much like LED lights can pretty much be powered straight from the switch or another component. So I'll show you what I've bought here to actually get this thing wired up. Now, unfortunately, I actually already started filming this episode. Um, I'd already wired up some of the car, but what I started with, you literally just go on eBay and type in so, hot rod wiring harness and you will get an actual full loom ready for a car. Now you can whack that thing in as is, it comes with a relay box and everything. I only bought it just for the physical wiring itself, but if you do want to use it, they're super comprehensive. Like on the actual wire themselves, it has written along what each wire does every like 100 mil cruise power, fuel gauge, sender, indicator left, brake switch power, fan power, like it's so simple. So you can literally just read the cables and it's loomed up to go to each corner of the car. So I laid out that initial harness to start with, cut off the fuse box because I'm not gonna use that, but that's what you can pretty much start with. Then we're gonna have our main panel for the engine. This is gonna be up on the roll cage and it's got obviously the start for the engine, ignition, turn the whole system on. Then I've got my water pump, power steering pump, thermo fans, fuel pump, and a spare. Biggest thing when you wire anything, always have a few spares because you'll probably figure out later you need some more stuff. So we've got to wire that first switch. None of this will have relays or fuses because it's just going to be a trigger wire. And I'm probably going to use just like a trailer plug, a uh, trailer harness, which has seven wires in it. Then I can run up the roll bar, tee into all of these, and then those signals will go to the relays. The other unit for anything that's low voltage, since these are all going to relays, they're like high current drawing things like the pumps and the fans, so they all use a lot of power. When it comes to all the LED lights that are very low powered, I've actually got one of these electronic wiring system switch panels. Now that is like a solid state switching panel. Really awesome bit of kit. I've actually never used one before, but that's all it is. Little button switches and it goes through a box that already has internal solid state relays and fuses and everything you need. So that can run all the low power stuff. Well, I say low power, but it actually has 30, two of them are 30 amps, which will run a fan as well. So we've got this switch panel, which will sit where the shifter is. And then this switch panel, which will sit up on the roll cage. They're my inputs. 
Now I've already laid out the wiring. The only other thing we need to do is the relay panel. So we'll get kicked off with that. I'm gonna jump on Fusion, and design up a little aluminum piece to mount all the uh, relays. Then we'll wire that up, get that in the car, and then start actually wiring up everything that needs to go everywhere. Just run upstairs because it's absolutely boiling hot today. I'm sweating my whole off in the shed. So, this plate came out pretty nice. It's uh, a little bit dirty on the front, but we won't worry about that. So, with this relay panel, um, I've gone and whacked 10 relays on here. I don't need 10 immediately, but the biggest thing with wiring this whole car is just making sure I don't have to add things later that I haven't accounted for. So, we're just gonna whack 10 relays mounted on here and then we'll get started with the wiring process. I think I'll wire it up first, do a bit of a time lapse, and then pretty much run you through how I've done that, why I've done that, and then this whole panel can be pretty much put in the car. So by doing it like this, standalone, and then hooking it in later, um, it's really good because you can work on it outside of the car and in the air car, which is like the best thing ever. So let's rip into it. We did it, here it is. Here is our little uh, relay mount. Uh, it's a shame the flex C that I laser cut in there is covered up by the actual relays. But again, I've gone for 10. Look how many there are. Now there's only six switches on that panel. But like I said, you always have a few extras. I've actually run an extra wire to every corner of the car in case I think of something later or want to add it. Once everything's loomed up, it just looks like a bird's nest. So. Let's get this mounted into the car. I'm going to run all these power cables through a fuse box from a fat cable from the battery. So I'm just waiting on that fuse panel. Um, all the earths here are just a trigger wire earth. So they can all be linked. It's not pulling much power. It's just telling the coil in the relay whether to open or close. So we'll have all the linked earths that can basically be earthed back to the body here. And then inputs from the switches up on the roll cage from that trailer plug will trigger all of these relays and then the big power cable coming from the battery and then the output will be all of the wires that send to different areas of the car. Now speaking of that, I've done a little uh, kind of ledger here for each section corner of the car and what wires that I put in the car correspond to what switch. So for example, one of the rock lights on the front right is the power antenna cable. So we're actually renaming the cables that are numbered um, and written on from the uh, harness from eBay and reassign them. So the power steering pump trigger is the horn wire. So that's what I'm gonna base it off and inside the car in the tunnel there, all these wires are sitting there just cut and I can link them up to the correct relay and run from there. So I put together a little battery box in here. I've decided to put it in the car, just here between the seats. It's sort of out the way, but it just means the engine bay stays nice and clean. Uh, mounted the electronic, uh, this is like the solid state actuatory thingy relay box, whatever you want to call it. So we've got our relays up there, fuse box there, which will feed all the relays. That, shifter, and this will be the control box for the lights and then just a main breaker for all the fuses. So the task now is to pretty much wire everything back to the battery here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect up all of these to the fuse box, put fuses in it, 
um, get these all finished off. Um, all the cables are here. So I've pretty much got everything from the back is this loom. Everything from the front is that loom there. Wire it into either here or the relays and then clean it all up. Put conduit around it. We've got our switch panel at the top here. So that's like, oh, I can't even see that. Ignition, water pump, power steering pump, fan, fuel pump, and a spare. And the start button. Let's get it all wired up. Alrighty, I did run a time lapse on my GoPro, but it didn't work for some reason. So, we're gonna move on, but the uh, fuse box is wired. Now, I'm gonna show you another little trick that I've learned over my years, just to keep things simple and clean, and that is when you wanna run an external switchboard, um, or you have like a uh, roof console with a bunch of rocket switches, similar to this. This is my switchboard up on the roof. Um, these are generally only used for signals, which send a positive or negative signal to a relay. So they don't carry a lot of current, so you don't need a massive wire. Now, a good clean way to do that is use trailer wire. So trailer wire you can get from any automotive store. They usually come in like a seven pin bunch. So you have a nice little cable, one single black cable that runs up with seven smaller cables inside of it. And they're all different colors. You can run those seven cables to all the signals from your switches and then run them down to the relay. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna pre-wire this up, all wired into each individual switch, match the colors down to the relays on the bottom. And all we run is one cable, super easy. So let's get into that. Alrighty guys, here we are inside of the XC. We are getting pretty close. The battery is hooked up here. I just need to strap it down. Um, now I ended up adding in this uh, breaker relay slash thing to switch off all the accessories. Um, now I still need to clean up all the wiring. I've got everything pretty much run where it needs to go. This is that control box, um, which all operates now. I just need to make a little unit to hold this, but basically switch it on. Um, we can go underglow, which actually turns on these interior lights here, except that one, which was unplugged at the moment, but these ones here. So we've got underglow, interior lights, um, indicators, uh, rear, front headlights, all that kind of stuff. Even the uh, EcoX turns on in the back, we give power to that. Um, so that basically runs all the lights and accessories. Now, this is that paddle up the top, so I'm gonna tie all the cables back up there, but basically we can pretty much switch ignition on, which I'm not gonna do because the motor's not hooked up at the moment. Um, but once the ignition's on, uh, it worked actually, then we uh, have access to switching on um, all these other ones. So we've got our power steering pump, which we can switch that straight on and that'll give me power steering. Um, so it's pretty sweet to have everything for the motor there. Uh, we've got thermo fans, fuel pump, power steering, water pump, ignition, and then the start button. And then down here, we have all the lights and accessories. So pretty much for shows and stuff, I'll basically have these on and everything else off. Um, and then I'm also gonna get a master breaker switch to remove uh, power. Oh, I've done the dash too. So we've hooked up when the ignition turns on, uh, all the dash lights up. So there are a bunch of Raceworks uh, gauges, which is pretty sweet. We've got volts, fuel, water temp, RPM, and oil pressure. Um, and then here's the screen for the cameras. So I'm gonna hook that up and have front and rear cameras so I can see where I'm going. So that's pretty much a rundown of the wiring. It's very basic. We've basically got a circuit and a system for all the accessories and lights, um, and then a switch panel which controls all the motor, fans, pumps, and everything. So it's super simple, and I pretty much just need to go around and conduit everything up, clean it up, and that's how you pretty much wire a car from scratch. So if you enjoyed this episode, like I said, these little Saturday episodes are just a little bit more information-based. Um, stripping it back to basics to sort of help. Uh, these are the kind of things that helped me when I was learning um, about different things, welding, wiring, all that kind of stuff. So I'll put a playlist down below as well uh, for the things I've covered, like uh, I think I've built motors, done a gearbox rebuild, um, how to weld, wiring. We're just gonna keep adding more and more. So definitely jump on that. Let me know what you wanna see next and I'll try and film when I can. But we'll see you on the next Tuesday episode and probably the next Saturday one as well. Thanks for watching.